Hi everyone, welcome to the Saucy Rebel. And today, by popular demand, we are going to actually cook a pasta carbonara, which is a really super simple way to go um, on a weeknight evening because it really takes about 15 minutes to put together. Um, the reason it's so fast is because the sauce is actually not made on the stove top. It cooks because of the hot pasta that's added to the sauce. So today we're going to show you that method, how to do it. It takes very few ingredients. Um, actually, the longest part of it is boiling your pasta. So we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Um, and we also want to say thank you to everybody who has tuned in, who has been supportive, and who has followed our channel. It's been an incredible success, and we're really, really happy to be able to share these recipes with you. So for today, our ingredients are, this is two tablespoons of butter. You can actually use less butter and some olive oil if you prefer the fat flavor. I really like the butter flavor, so that's what we went with. This is three eggs. Um, this is going to be the base for the sauce along with three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. Now, this is pancetta. Pancetta is an Italian bacon, essentially. Why I like to use it, number one, there's no cutting. Number two, it sautés very, very quickly. And this is four ounces of pancetta. You can substitute regular bacon. You can substitute um, already cooked bacon. It just takes a little less time. You have a few options here, but really you want a meat. This is salt and white pepper half a cup of Parmesan cheese, one cup of onions. Now, here's my other cheat. These are actually not fresh onions. Those are frozen onions. Um, you don't have to thaw them. You don't have to do anything to them. All you have to do is take them out of the bag. And the same thing with the peas. Those are out of a 12 ounce bag of frozen peas. That is about one cup of peas. And I just literally pour them out of the bag and put them in. So the first thing I like to do is go ahead and put my water on to boil. Now, for the pasta for pasta carbonara, you can use about any shape you want. This time I'm going to use fettuccine. It's a little thicker, wider noodle. And some people say, oh, it clings to the carbonara better. Da -da -da. I have done shells. I've done macaroni. I've done spaghetti. I have done angel hair. You can do anything you want when it comes to the actual shape of pasta. For those of you who are gluten-free, you can use a gluten-free pasta in this. It will not affect your recipe whatsoever, just so you know thing I do is I go ahead and while this water is trying to boil, we go ahead and we make the base for our cream sauce. So this is just three eggs and I've got it in the pan that I'm actually going to put the pasta into. And we're going to beat these up. And there's nothing interesting about these eggs. These are three store-bought grade A large eggs. Blah, blah. Nothing interesting. And you see how I get them where they're pretty light yellow. You want to get them good and beaten. This is a heavy cream. We're going to go ahead and pour in our heavy cream. Try to get all of it out of there. And we're going to beat these together. And this makes kind of a light yellow, thick mixture. Kind of messy, but very tasty in its final product. And then to that, we add our Parmesan, half a cup of Parmesan. Now, if you really like parm, you can add more parm. You can go to, you know, three quarters of a cup. You can also sprinkle more parm on top. Totally fine. And yes, this is just grated Parmesan. You can use fresh grated Parmesan. You can use the crazy premium stuff. Honestly, this is like the basic stuff because it's what I had at home. And we're going to go ahead and also to this mix, add our salt and pepper. And then we're going to set this aside. And, you know, while I'm doing this, I'm going to say a lot of people get jumpy about leaving things out too long or you have to refrigerate it. And I'll say this, for the time it's going to take you to put this together, you can leave it on the counter. It's not going to bear you a foodborne illness for the 10 minutes it's going to take. What you don't want to do is get warm. So as long as it's slightly chilled and you touch it, you're all right. Um, and that's really what I do is I set aside. A couple of things to tell you. Number one, this recipe was inspired by Pioneer Woman. Um, she has a very famous one on her blog. I looked at it. I was like, I don't have thick cut bacon. I don't have this. I don't have that. Hmm, what can I do? It's hard to play with it. And that's how this recipe came about. And number two, if you are vegetarian, there is a way to make carbonara. Sorry, guys. If you're vegan, you're out of luck. You need the eggs. You need the heavy cream. But if you are vegetarian and do not wish to use pancetta, you may substitute four baby bella mushrooms or white button mushrooms chopped up. I like to kind of 
cut them in half and a half and a half again. So like small, but not tiny. So they're about the size of the pancetta. And then I also, you can substitute in there as well, one zucchini or yellow squash. And I like to cut those in half and half again and then down. Um, so you have these little quarters almost. And you saute them. When I saute these peas, you'll see what I do. Do the exact same thing with the vegetables instead of the pan shell. Now my butter has melted. And we're in our saute pan again, our trusty saute pan. And to this, we're going to go ahead and add our onions first. Now these are frozen. You can use fresh onion. And it's one small or half a large. You can use any kind of onion except for red. So we're going to go ahead and get this sizzling. And like I said before, you can do half butter, half olive oil. It's really up to you how we want to do that. And we're going to let this sizzle for a minute. Because our onions are frozen, they have to kind of thaw out. That's why they look a little wet. Um, but if you are using fresh, you want to sweat these. So you want them to kind of get a little translucent and soft. It's about where we are right now. Have to sizzle them. And to this, we're going to go ahead and add our pancetta. So sometimes you're on Saucy Rebel. We do exactly what you do at home in the kitchen. We forget an ingredient. I kind of forgot the garlic. So you can use two cloves of fresh garlic smashed up or pressed, or this is just garlic powder. And I'm going to go ahead and add this into my pancetta mixture. There's your garlic powder. Now it's smoking. Now if it was fresh, I would have put that in with the onions. I honestly just forgot it. It happens. And so you see how my pancetta has now browned? That's what you want. And out of this, we're going to add the peas. And we add the peas last because we don't want them to lose their color. Now again, if you are doing a vegetarian version of this, you would have added your mushrooms and squash where I added the pancetta. And then you add the peas last because again, you want that nice green, green color. Now, these are, whew, these are frozen peas. So all we're really doing to them is getting them to not be frozen. We are not trying to cook them. And the reason is because when you add the hot pasta to them, they're going to cook some more. So you're really just trying to get them lightly, lightly sauteed. Again, or they lose their color. So when you... Go. When you taste your peas, you want them crunchy. And you see how we're starting to get a little brown in the bottom right there? Because I just kind of sat them here and let it sit. You're done. And we're going to take these off the heat because now we wait for pasta to boil. For boiling water, I'm putting one pound of fettuccine. You may use gluten-free pasta. You can use whole wheat pasta. You can use just about anything. Now, I'll tell you what I haven't tried. What I haven't tried is, um, you know, using a vegetable as a base for carbonara. Like, it's very popular now to spiral vegetables as a pasta substitute. I haven't tried it. I don't know if it'll work. In theory, it would because the heat is what cooks the sauce. But if you're using heavy cream, do you really need to be that healthy? I don't think so. The pasta is done. I have not drained it yet. But I'm going to show you my foolproof method for not ending up with scrambled eggs. Remember, I made my lovely sauce earlier. I'm going to pour half of this, roughly, into a big ramekin. Now, or it's actually a measuring cup. Um, now you can, of course, do all of your mixing in a measuring cup and then pour over. I just find it doesn't quite cook as evenly when I do that. So next thing I'm going to do is drain my pasta. Hot and drained. I'm shaking it over the um, sink right now. Now you can reserve a little water if you want to, but I don't tend to need to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add half of my pasta to this dish. Now you have to keep it moving. Here is your catch. Scramble, scramble. Do not stop moving the sauce. Because if you stop moving the sauce, you will cook your cream and eggs too fast, and you will have a problem. And it all goes. You will end up with scrambled eggs and not carbonara. Nobody wants scrambled eggs. Sorry, messy. Told you we were going to be messy around here. You see how this is starting to get thick and glossy? That's what you want. And then, once you've got this mixed in pretty darn well, you can see how it's going through. Oh, a little bit of a noodle oops there. 
or I ignored my noodles and they didn't stir them and they glumped, what happens? Then you go ahead and add the rest of this. It's a little cooler. This stops you from ending up with a giant pile of scrambled eggs because you're not trying to cook it all at once. And yes, messy. Now, I'm using a regular fork to do this. You can use a pasta server. Ooh, and we're messy. Yay, messy. All right? And see, we end up with this nice white sauce. And yes, this is cooked. You have, at this point, cooked the egg. Um, I know, kind of amazing, right? Yay, Italians, for figuring this one out. And then, to this mixture, see how pretty we are? Nice, thick sauce. Everything is coated. To this, we add this mixture. Oops, sorry. At some point, I'll learn that there's a camera, <laughs> and I have to, like, pay attention to the camera. I'm kind of bad at that. And then, I'll use my wooden spoon with my fork, and we're going to toss this together. This one's really saucy. So, ah, making a little bit of a mess here. I told you we were going to be rebellious and messy. That's just how that goes. And guess what you have, folks? One pasta carbonara ready to serve. Total cooking time on this is actually limited by your pasta. Now, for me today, it took me a little longer because I didn't drop the pasta in early. Usually I drop the pasta in um, long before I did, um, but usually cooking time list really takes about 15 to 18 minutes. A very simple, delicious pasta carbonara. Again, vegetarians, you won't get the pancetta, but you will get the same effect. Um, and I have been making this for a really long time. It's kind of a household favorite here. Um, and I'm going to eat it for lunch because I'm starving. All this cooking makes me hungry. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate everyone tuning in. And until next time, I hope you all have a rebellious time in your kitchen. Have a great one.